Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I'd go over my call list or the list of varieties that I'm getting rid of in 2019, or maybe I already got rid of them. Um, we did do a video very recently talking about the varieties that I'm acquiring and the varieties that I'm rooting. So kind of why should I just give you guys the good? Um, the bad in this particular video is just as valuable, if not more valuable, um, to someone with a fig collection of many different varieties. This is all really meant to give you guys some perspective. Um, you know, just because I don't particularly like or I got rid of a fig variety doesn't mean that you're not going to like it. It also doesn't mean that I'm getting rid of it forever. Um, there are certain scenarios, and I've reacquired a number of varieties that I've gotten rid of in the past. Maybe I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind in the spring. Um, I changed my mind even since writing this post here on our figs. So, uh, you know, nothing's really set in stone, and you can always reacquire things. You can use them as rootstock, which I think is great. And then if you want them back, you can just get a nice little sucker from the base. There's ways to do that. Um, and you can very easily reacquire the variety that you once lost. So, I think it's a pretty cool thing to do. At the very least, use them as rootstock. Um, so let's kind of get into it. Um, you know, there's a whole host of different reasons why I got rid of these things. And, you know, I really just want to give you guys some perspective as to how I came to this decision um, so that you can kind of use this as a guide and to help your way of thinking. I think a lot of people get very attached to their fig varieties. I don't personally understand it, uh, but I, I do in a way in that you spend a lot of time and energy and money and maybe it's sentimental to you. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, there's many, many varieties out there. And, uh, you know, I try not to get personally too attached to any of these varieties or too biased with what it is that I'm, I'm growing because I want to be honest with myself and I want to be honest with you guys. Um, so let's kind of get into the first variety here. The first one is called Baccarinho. It's a Portuguese fig that's supposed to be quite early. And that was one of the, my main drivers for acquiring it. Um, it's actually not a bad fig at all. And I, um, you know, I, I actually decided not to get rid of it. So even though it's on this list, I'm still going to grow it for another year. Um, at least another year. Um, I think this fig, personally, how I've the the few fruits that I've had off of it, have not really been the truest representation of the variety. And you can really get a sense of that as you kind of get more experience growing figs. The first the first few years, at least the first three, sometimes you can get away with it on a first year graft. You can actually get some really great quality. If you graft a plant and in that first year, you can actually get a pretty good representation of that of that variety. Uh, but most of the time, if they're on their own roots and just in general, they just need a longer time to mature. And some varieties need a longer time than others. And maybe you didn't give this particular fig the right conditions. Maybe you screwed something up. I mean, there's so many reasons that this could be a thing so uh in my opinion in this fig it's best to wait it's i have to wait another year before i can really decide but it's on the fence for me and um i didn't find it all that unique but i have a feeling it could be quite unique um you know if space was an issue as an example i would have to get rid of it um and there's really nobody else growing it uh that I know I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm the only person I know that's actually growing this fig, um, or at least in a similar climate. And I don't even know if people have the same Baccarinho as I do. There's probably multiple and different Baccarinhos out there. You know, I don't even know where mine comes from. It could not even be a Portuguese fig. I mean, there's a lot of questions still need to be answered with this particular fig. Um, and that's partly why I haven't really taken any cuttings off of this one just yet, or I haven't even decided to sell it. Um, yeah, but I think overall it's a pretty good quality fig. Uh, it's just something that I need some more time to evaluate. 
and um, I thought about for seriously thought about getting rid of it but now I'm thinking you know let's wait another year let's see what it can do because it hasn't reached its full potential but Barra Branca is a fig that I absolutely love uh, this is one of the best figs for sure that exists it's just not a great fig here in a humid climate in a shorter season climate preferably I think this fig should be caprified uh, it doesn't as I mentioned here that it doesn't like the big temperature swings it seems to split it seems to crack very easily when that happens um, the flavor is quite unique and that it has a particular flavor profile to it that I uh, like to describe as fruity honey I believe is how I describe it so if I bring you guys over to the cultivar list that you guys can find in the description We'll show you guys this this category here. It's a honey berry category, and or fruity honey is how I describe it. And it's kind of like your typical honey fig combined with uh, a fruitier berry fig. So like you take essentially a fig that's in this category right here, and then you combine it with the honey category, and that's what you get. You kind of get the best of both worlds. It's a hard flavor profile to find. But I finally found some that actually do really well here, like LSU Huye and Albo. Those are just superior. Uh, and it really comes down to that redundancy. If uh, I didn't have LSU Huye or Albo, which pretty, which tastes pretty similar, at least in this climate, I bet you they won't taste all that similar when they're caprified and grown in like California. But at least here they're similar. And... Um, if I didn't have that redundancy, I wouldn't even be getting rid of Bavera Bronca because that's how much I like this flavor profile. Um, so yeah, I think it's wonderful in other places, just not here. Uh, Black Sidar, I think I am going to commit to growing this for one more year because I have nothing really to lose. It's in the ground. We're going to make some hard decisions, I think with some of our in-ground trees because we really have just a huge variety of in-ground figs um we have probably close to 50 or more varieties i it's definitely more than 50 in the ground this black sadar is in the ground and i have a feeling it'll do better in the ground than in a pot um however it has such a large eye that if it consistently has that large eye or at least even like let's say even 30 percent of the figs have a large eye then this has got to go um it's just not a fig that you want you know if it has a big eye and it it tends to split because of that eye or it tends to ferment or mold because of that eye then that's a big issue here in this climate specifically it's pretty much a big issue everywhere um but less so in a drier uh, climate than mine. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to give that one one more year because we really have nothing to lose. But inevitably, I'm 99% sure at the end of the 2020 season, I'll probably be digging that one up and getting rid of it um, to someone who wants it. Um, the next fig we're getting rid of is Brandon Street Unknown. Reason being, it's redundant. It is pretty much an exact match for Taramo Unknown. And Taramo, I haven't really been too hot on. I haven't really been in loving either of them. I do think that they do better in the ground than they do in pots. Um, simply because they do have some issues with splitting, some issues with cracking, some issues with SWD. Most of which can be solved by putting them in the ground with a more consistent soil moisture. Um, I also find that the ants really love it. So I'm going to have to put some tangle foot around this tree for sure. Um, also the flavor is not incredible. So, uh, I think it's got its place in the ground here and that's basically it. Um, Rojoto Nero Romano. This is a fig I just never fruited. And, uh, after looking at some photos of the fig that this is and where it was grown, um, it should be a lot better. It should look a lot nicer. It just doesn't really, uh, in terms of its appearance, really look like a fig that I I would really enjoy anyway. Um, it's more of a big fig, I think. It does do better in like cooler climates, 
um, shorter season climates. And that's, I think, the biggest reason why I picked it up. But, um, you know, I'm not really willing to wait for this one because at the end of the day, it doesn't really look like a fig that's going to make the cut anyway. Um, and knowing what I know now, that's kind of the, the issue here is that I, if I knew what I knew now, I probably never would have acquired it. You know, so it's kind of like, um, you know, it's just, this, it is what it is. And unfortunately, we're going to get rid of something that we never even fruited. Um, Cardinio, this is another one I'm kind of on the fence with, but I did decide that I'm going to give it another year. I've seen some photos of it, finally, from some growers that look like this is actually a respectable fig. Um, and I'm going to give it one more chance to see if it'll hold on to its fruit because it hasn't held on to its fruit yet. And that to me is a very annoying scenario. Um, this is the second year now, and this will be the third year that I have it from graft. So from graft, I should be all right with it. In its third year, we should have no issues. I think I just need to feed this tree a bit more, or um, I'm sorry, water this tree a bit more because it tends to drop. Um, Cavalieri is one of the best figs that exists and it's a real shame because it's even pretty damn good here It's just that the moisture and because of how late it is uh, I'm choosing it over other varieties and the same thing I could say the same thing about Fico Rubato The both of them are just late um, Rubato is even later than Cavalieri by quite a bit. It doesn't like the cool fall that we have here Neither of them really like the cooler weather um, you know, especially those temperature swings when we get in our fall and the temperatures go from like warm to very cold at night, uh, we just get a lot of cracking. We get a lot of splitting and that really ruins the fruit. And then that's a good chance for SWD to get in there and spoil the fruit for me. So I really don't, um, I really don't think either one of these will ever really make the cut here, even with the greenhouse. I got my Cavalieri to fruit very early this year, in fact, and it's, I think of, it's quite an old tree. It was at least three or four years old on its own roots. And, um, as good as it is, as good as both of them are, there's another fig that I grow called Hate of the Argentile, which is down here, which pretty much has the same cherry candy flavor. And they have the same flavor profile here, as I've mentioned, as cherry candy and you can see I have four figs on this list San Baggio I have a feeling is going to be on this list um, but for the most part hated the Argentile is the king of the three at least here in this climate and it just fruits a lot earlier I mean it's very, it's a mid-season fig right on the dot mid-season it does superior rain resistance to the other two it's really tasty. Um, it's very productive. It's just an overall incredible fig. I can't really complain to have that flavor profile. The only way I can really beat a hate of the Argentile is to get something that ripens in the early season to eventually replace that. And San Baggio, I imagine, probably somewhere in that range of early to mid-season. But uh, maybe that will be the fig that eventually kicks out Hate of the Argentile. We did get a Hate of the Argentile. We, we got rid of a Hate of the Argentile tree that, in all honesty, needed to be rejuvenation pruned. and needed to cut it back all the way down to the base, which is exactly what I did this season when I bare-rooted it and sent it out to somebody. This tree is going to perform for that person a lot better than it did perform for me. Um, and this is probably where a lot of my thoughts are on that it should be grafted. This variety, Hate of the Argentile, doesn't really have the greatest root system. It really need, it really should be grafted onto something that's uh, a stronger uh, rooter, that has more vigor to it, a healthier root system. First off, you're going to save yourself a lot more time in the long run. Um, you're going to have probably more consistent fruit size. You're probably not going to have as many issues in terms of the finicky things that can happen with these figs, like like dropping and and um, a lack of production and just weird weird characteristics. Maybe even some like fig mosaic virus. By 
you know, rejuvenation pruning this thing, it pretty much is a cure-all for all of that. But at the end of the day, I had to spend like three years for this tree to get to um, the point that my two-year-old graft was at. Um, actually, my two-year-old graft was fur further ahead, more productive, better fruit quality, better fruit size, consistent fruit size than the ungrafted hated the Argentile. So, um, and that was a year older. So the ungrafted tree was three years old. The grafted tree was two years old. And I was already ahead of the game than the tree that was a year older, which to me is just kind of mind blowing. But uh, I do believe that just in general, a lot of these varieties should be grafted onto something um, that's the perfect rootstock. You would think um, that a lot more people would come to this realization, but I don't think a lot of people have done enough grafting to really have this realization in the fig community. Um, but 100%, I think, across the board, the majority of varieties should be grafted onto something like a brown turkey or a raspberry latte. And there's a lot of different rootstocks out there that you could use and you can make an argument that there could be some other characteristics that these rootstocks are giving the the scion, um, and it really would be beneficial to those varieties for not just you know some reasons of just having a stronger, more vigorous tree. Um, I think there's a whole host of maybe other reasons that we just really don't know just yet, and. Um, at some point in the future, we'll experiment with that a little bit more. Um, Syndrosa is another fig that I really enjoyed. It's super productive, has large fruit. Um, per pound of harvest that you would get off of a tree, I would put this one in my top three. You know, I'd put something like yellow long neck. If you like weighed your entire harvest per tree, Yellow long neck would probably be number one. Syndrosa may be number two. And then some sort of Californian brown turkey would be like number three. And so Syndrosa for that reason has some really incredible characteristics to it. But it's very late. Just like Fico Rubato, it's extremely late. It's later than Black Madeira. And if it's later than Black Madeira, you know we've got some issues here. Um, because for Black Madeira, you need a greenhouse head start in the beginning of the season. And you need to put the Black Madeira in the greenhouse at the end of the season. So overall, it's just a giant, it's just a lot of maintenance, uh, a lot of requirements for a fig that's really only going to give me maybe 30% of the crop. And 30% of that crop isn't going to ripen at the right time of the year for me to just get a high quality fruit. So I recommend it for anywhere with a longer season, more warmth. Um, you know, same thing with Fico Rubato and, and, and Cavalieri. Um, I don't think Sandrosa really likes the temperature swings here either. It does tend to get a lot of large cracks in it, and that's not a good thing for fruit quality. Um, Soretto is a fig that um, I'm pretty certain, and some other people that I have talked to that grow this are also certain that it's a Smyrna or a San Pedro, and that it just needs the some pollination um, actually I think it's more of a San Pedro is what we we believe it to be it needs pollination for the main crop I'm not going for Brabus here guys it's just not a crop that I care about we just have too much fluctuation in terms of our temperatures in the spring that fluctuation really messes with the fig in the fall and in the spring and in the spring it ruins the Braba crop um, Chater Green is a variety that uh, hasn't fruited for me. This one comes from John Chater. I think it's a wonderful variety, and I originally saw it and I thought, wow, that could be, that has a lot of potential here. It reminds me a lot of like White Triana and A Triano and, um, and figs like that. But um, I did see some photos of it after looking and studying these once again. I saw some photos of it. First off, no one really grows it, but I did see some photos originally that was taken probably by either John Chater or somebody years ago that was growing it, and it was split wide open. And to me, that's a really bad sign for uh, any fig. If I'm 
acquiring a fig here and it has any photos like a fig that I thought about acquiring recently was the A Sangui, which is a very rare Italian fig uh, that Paulo grows and it's supposed to be very tasty and I would say all right well let's let's try to find it um, the issue is that I've seen photos of it that almost all of them are split to some degree and if they're split that's just a really bad sign um, so it doesn't matter really how tasty or how rare it is I'm not gonna grow it unless it's uh, it's got those great characteristics to it that I'm looking for uh, Dn Manel is one that we actually didn't get rid of <laughs> we're gonna see I have a theory out um, on this fig <laughs> essentially my theory First off is that DMNL is 100%. It's a Grease de Saint Jean type. It looks just like it. You can read about it in Ponza's book. He describes it pretty similarly to a Grease de Saint Jean. But I was really thrown off by some of the characteristics that if you read Bode's notes on it in France on Grease de Saint Jean, then you read Ponza's notes on DMNL in Spain it doesn't exactly match up in that Grease de Saint Jean is supposed to be a great fig for drying. It's supposed to do really well in terms of the rain and humidity. It can split um, when you have too much soil moisture, but overall it's supposed to be a very thick, jammy, exquisitely tasting fig. Um, and it's supposed to have those drying capabilities to it. In fact, that's what Grease de Saint Jean is mainly used for in France, is for drying. So for me, I thought this would be a fantastic variety. The, the guys up in Michigan that grow it, they love it. Um, for me, Pons has mentioned in his book that it's watery, and I sort of agree. I think it has a watered down flavor. I think it needs a longer time to hang on the tree before it can start to dry. I think the texture can be there, um, just like Grease de Saint Jean, but I'm more um, afraid of this variety in that it should either get one of two scenarios here in this climate. It should either have a greenhouse head start in a pot so that it can ripen by August 1st, or it should have uh, be planted in the ground where the soil moisture is more consistent, less issues with that that whole problem that this variety has. Hopefully over time, my goal is to have it in the ground here. That's what I did. I planted it to see if it will compare in flavor and, and quality to the other Grease de Saint Jeans that I grow here in the ground. Hopefully solve that moisture issue and we'll reevaluate it again at the end of, uh, of this season and see how it does. It may need two seasons with it before I can say for sure I also think it's a great fig to put in the ground because it needs a while to um, establish itself. It also has a very weak root system. It should be grafted in a pot and in the greenhouse here in this climate. If that doesn't scenario doesn't happen, I just don't really have much hopes for this variety. The other scenario is that you just feed it very heavily and that's sort of what the Michigan guys do is that they they really feed their trees quite a bit and they develop a very strong tree and it's possible that my tree just is quite weak because I haven't fed it enough and certain varieties as I mentioned they just need more food they need more food they need more care they need more attention and re realistically we should just be grafting the majority of them anyway and sort of solving this issue completely with uh, most of the varieties out there. Um, so who knows what this one will, will kind of turn into for me. I was very impressed over the last two years by the flavor, <clears throat> but again, it is a bit watered down. And the only real way that I'm really ever going to super enjoy this fig is if it's slightly shriveled, slightly starting to dry. If I can't get that to happen, then we're probably going to move on. <clears throat> there are many, many strains of Grease de Saint Jean. So it's not like DMNL is it or the Grease de Saint Jean we have here. There's actually probably like three or four different strains, I would guess, in the United States of Grease de Saint Jean. 
There's also plenty throughout Europe by different names. Um, so it's not like, you know, I have to stick with Dian Manel and if I don't like Dian Manel, I won't like Riste St. Jean, you know. I have to just find the one strain that is superior. And so far it's not looking like it's Dian Manel. This is a long one, guys. <clears throat> so let's see here. We got let's move on to De La Cassetta. Similar story with this fig is that I'm not really impressed by it. I think it needs more time to mature. I didn't get any fruit from it last year. Best scenario, I think, for this fig, looking at it again in, in Pons' book, I think it's going to have the best shot in the ground or with a greenhouse head start. So I put it in the ground. Uh, we didn't get rid of it. Uh, but we will reevaluate again at the end of 2020. Uh, De La Gloria, this is a very, very late fig. Pons recommends it, I think, for the Brava that it puts out. And I did see some Brava that I would have gotten if I kept this variety, but I cut it off my tree. Um, it was a Franken fig. I just cut that limb off and got rid of it. It's just too late. The, the fruit quality, I'm sure, is superb and incredible, but it's not worth growing for anybody that's... Uh, in a shorter season. It, it does seem later than Black Madeira. It kind of has its issues. I, I guess, if anything, you grow it for the Braba. I think, personally, it would do really well in uh, a dry, long season climate like California. Um, same thing with, like, Chater Green. I think that one and Sindrosa we sort of talked about. I think those would all have a lot of potential here. Uh, same thing, you can kind of just wrap up the same exact thoughts with De La Plata Campanera. Great tasting fig. It's not actually as late as uh, De La Gloria. It's more of a mid to late season fig here, but it does split. And because it splits, it's got to go. Um, Dulce Caterai. This is a fig that keeps dropping that I ended up giving to my buddy Simon. Um, for him to hold on to actually no this isn't one I gave to my buddy Simon this is one that I actually held on to I didn't cut this one out just yet um, but because it is dropping so much it's on the same tree as Zafiro and Cardinio um, and Dulce Caterai so between the three of them I'd rather just have a Zafiro tree personally but I would like to see how Cardinio and Dulce Caterai do for one more year. No fruit dropping. If it works out, it works out. If not, I think we just say the end of it and we, we get rid of those two varieties. Um, that's a tree. Overall, I think I need to water more and feed more specifically. All right, moving on. We have Encanto. This is like a, a seedling of Villa de Bordeaux. I just have not been impressed. I haven't given it enough time. I don't see the real benefit of growing it. I'm sure it's quite good given enough time, but it's just not one that I was really willing to be patient with. It does seem quite dwarfed, um, like a weaker grower. I don't know what that's about, but it did it did need more time before I can really say uh, much of an opinion on it. Fico Gentile, this is another fig that the Michigan guys love, and um, for me, it splits a lot. Uh, it's a great tasting fig. It's very productive. Um, but I'm not seeing the great value in it because if it splits, it's a goner. Just across the board, if it splits, it's gone. doesn't matter what it is. That's really the only um, criteria that um, would just immediately get the boot here. Um, the only way a splitter would really work here is if it ripens very early in the season. You know, at the very latest, it starts ripening by August 15th. If I can't get it to ripen by August 1st or August 15th, it's just not worth it here. It's just not going to work. Um, Planera is another fig like that, that I keep Planera just because I can put it in the greenhouse, get it to ripen probably by like July 15th, maybe even August 1st at the latest, and then it'll ripen in a period with not a, a too much rain. Um, 
and it ripen in a period with enough heat um, to get it to, to fully ripen um, its flavor. All right, let's move on here. Um, Biconita, this is a fig that's um, similar to Black Mission and it's similar to my Galicia Negra and for that reason, it was redundant. It was, Galicia Negra is far superior, I think, in terms of flavor. I am still trying to find a better Black Mission type. I think the fig out there I'm, I want the most and I can't find it is a fig called Porquensa Negra. It should be the earliest of these Black Missions or one of the earliest and it should have a great flavor to it. So um, that's the one I really want. But in the meantime, I have to settle for uh, Galicia Negra and Galicia Negra is really, really tasty. Um, all right, let's move on. Figo Sefeño Oscuro is a dropper. Uh, I'm not giving it any more time. I don't know anyone that's fruited it. Um, it's supposed to be common. I'm sure it is common. But again, I haven't given, given it enough time. And it doesn't really seem like a fig looking at the photos of a fig that I'd want anyway. You know, knowing what I know now. For Golanira, this is one that I give gave to my buddy Simon for him to take care of in the meantime. I think it's very likely that it's a San Pedro. Um, I didn't get any Brava this year, but it put out it puts out a ton of Brava this fig. And I have a feeling I'm gonna want this fig back, and that's kind of why I gave it to Simon for him to take care of. And um, hopefully he waters it well, and then therefore we should get some fruits at the very least, some Brava. Um, I would expect a pretty good uh, Brava crop, and then. You may even get some main crop that'll finally ripen that I just don't have the patience for. Um, so he's going to give me the skinny on that one this year. We'll see what happens. Um, I think it's likely that this will be the one San Pedro fig that I hold on to, if it is indeed a San Pedro, because the fruit quality on this is off the charts. It should be one of the best quality Brabas you can find in terms of flavor. Um, so I would love to find a San Pedro variety and just have like maybe one or two of them, put them in the greenhouse and get like a stupidly early crop. Like that ripens by June 1st. Um, that is plentiful and very productive and, uh, very tasty. I think that would be the fig for that particular thing. Um, I have a fig called Gallo, and I may have mixed this up with another fig called Bicane. And Bicane's another one I got rid of that isn't on this list, but Bicane and Gallo really don't seem very impressive. They're very bland honey figs. I may have mixed them up, and maybe my Gallo is instead Bicane, but uh, yeah, it just seems like a giant waste of time. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, I don't like it. It really has some fig flowers in it that didn't form correctly and as a result like only half of the fig is edible you know um uh gm 125 and gm 25 well gm 25 never fruited i don't know anyone that's ever gotten fruit off of it i'm tired of waiting gm 125 is really watered down flavor very bland um GM-175 is actually a really incredible fig. Um, the flavor, though, seems a bit subpar. And what I would say about this one is that it's very productive. One of the most productive figs I have. It sets very easily. This year, for whatever reason, it seemed to ripen a bit later than I would have liked. And that, for me, it lost some points there. Um, but I think it just needs some time to mature. I actually sold the tree locally to I think Matthew who really only lives about five ten minutes away from me so Matthew's gonna grow it we're gonna see what happens with his tree and um, I may want it back you never know I mean not that I'll take the entire tree back but maybe he can send me some cuttings and maybe it's just a maturity issue you never know um, golden rainbow we ended up getting rid of just one of these because I didn't want too many of these trees. I don't think it's the best fig in the world. Um, 
I have one in the ground and I have one in the pot, and that's enough for me. Uh, between that and yellow long neck, I think I'm good. Um, overall, it is a great fig, you know. I, but here it just seems pretty mild, and it needs probably a little bit more of that heat, or maybe a little bit more sunshine. Whatever it is, it's just not ever going to be a fig that, if you kind of think about all of these varieties that I've mentioned so far in a different way, you know, it has to be eventually in my top 10, right? We've talked about the best figs that I grow here, and these are all my keepers, right? So if it doesn't break into at least the keeper list, then what's the point? But inevitably, it's got to break into my top 10. It has to find a place somewhere, and so far I have other honey figs that are just better, taste better, um, maybe don't perform nearly as well because Golden Rainbow does perform very well, but certainly they don't split. And I, I've noticed that uh, Yellow Long Neck and Golden Rainbow, they're they're good with rain, but they're not impervious to uh, to that moisture. Gross Monstrous, this is one we had last year. We decided to recover it, and then I was like, wow, this one actually has some potential to it. I think Rom was the person who kind of inspired me to try to grow it again, and I had bad feelings about it years ago in terms of it splitting, and um, if it splits, it's out, right? Well, this year it wasn't very impressive, and I was just, I should have just stuck with my guns, honestly. I should, I'd known, like, you know, deep down inside you have that gut intuition. It's just one that you should, I should have never had uh, recovered it. And maybe I'll say the same thing about the ones that I haven't gotten rid of, like, like Baccarino and Black Sadar and, you know, what are some others? The DN Manel and De La Cassetta. You know, maybe my gut is going to be right in the end, but I guess I'm willing to take that chance to see if I am if I am totally right. Um, I go Prush. I don't know if anyone has fruited this one without the wasp. Um, and there is a fig that my friend Peter Lee really likes, and I don't think it's I go. I think it's... Uh, Man, yeah, it's something else, yeah. So ignore that last comment because I go Prush. I just don't know anyone that's fruited it and, um, you know, outside of California with the wasp. And I'm sure maybe it could, you know, become common with enough time, but I'm not really willing to sit here and find out. And I don't even think this one has dropped figs for me. It just hasn't formed figs for me. Um, it's never formed figs in like three years. And it's grafted. Yeah, I think that's accurate. So, yeah, for me, uh, I got to pass. Italian to 58, we're just getting rid of an extra. Um, it's fallen out of favor for me. I think my money is more towards Colonel Littman's, and that's what we're, we're propagating for this particular category of fig. Um, is mirror we got rid of one of them but I decided to get rid of I started to keep one of them I have two is mirror trees I have one is mirror not trees um, and I decided to keep an is mirror not and just an is mirror and see which one of them ends up doing what and we'll give another year to the is mirror um, to see if it actually holds on to its fruit because for two years now it's dropped um, I think there's a very good chance that the people in Bulgaria, in, um, yeah, I think it's Bulgaria, they have a pretty good wasp population there, a Blastophaga, and they just don't know it. Um, you know, the, the Blastophaga is in Hungary. It's been proven to survive temperatures um, at, you know, somewhere between 12 and 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And Bulgaria doesn't always get that cold. And the temperatures in Bulgaria um, often are high enough for the wasp population to survive and to repopulate or to um, even proliferate. So I think there's a lot of questions there. I'm not really sure what that is. 
Uh, Jade, Lim Lam Jade from Lampo here is one that really is weak. Um, I It looks like an incredible fig uh, when grown in Portugal, but here it's seeming to be very weak, and it needs some time to mature, but I'm not very optimistic for it. Um, I've seen, just from what I've seen so far in the two years I've had it from graft, both years, both of which years, by the way, it has fruited. It just doesn't seem to have what it takes in this climate. And um, I know I've seen photos of it that have been that have been pollinated, and it's an incredible fig. So this may just be another Portuguese fig that doesn't really work out or translate well here. There really isn't many Portuguese figs that I know of that actually translate well here. Um, I'm going to be honest. I really don't know any of them. And it's not like I'm biased. Maybe Figo Preto de Taurus Novas would do well here. I'm sure it will. But there's a lot of really tasty Portuguese figs that exist. But not many of them seem to really translate well to this climate. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not very hopeful for it. There's also the Lampira Prush. We're going to get rid of this for sure. I think we already did. It splits like crazy. I didn't get any fruit this year. Um, I've talked to some other people, and they confirmed that it, it's a splitter. So for that reason, it's out. Uh, the large Vignus Purple, this one was found by my buddy Devin. Um, I've given this a number of years, and it's dropped every year. This prior year, I hacked it so much that it didn't really do anything for me, but I have a feeling that my buddy Simon, who has it, may end up getting something out of it because I really don't think it should need pollination. Um, it comes from an area of France that shouldn't have the fig wasp, and for that reason, I don't know why it's dropping. Um, it's kind of strange. Um, Leopoldo Abruzzo, this is another one that hasn't really fruited for people outside of wasp land could be a san pedro a lot of the italian varieties um seemingly are little ruby this is one i just gotta dig up it's just too small um i've never thought i would say that but the eye is pretty big for a small fig and that combination it just really rubs me the wrong way i don't even go out of my way to, to eat it even if it's ripe i won't go out of my way and say, oh, let me eat a fig. Um, it seems to do well, pretty in, pretty well in ground here though. It's quite early. It's got a nice flavor, but the, the big eye really throws me off and it's just so small. Um, yeah, so I'm also filming right now. And um, LSU Red is one of those figs that is another one that we kind of got rid of and I think we um, in combination with LSU Scott's black they're solid solid figs I've had them for four or more years and I just had to get rid of them um, they just didn't make the cut over the long run and these are two figs I could honestly say that I've had for a long enough time evaluated them for a long enough time and have said all right well you know, enough's enough, and let's just move on. Um, you know, they do have a solid flavor. Overall, they're like a three out of five for me. They're one of the better performer fi performing figs out there. Um, but yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan of either of them. Uh, particularly LSU Scott's Black ripens a lot of its figs at once. If you have a big rain that comes in, it ruins the entire crop which we did this year. It is it is my most productive fig, though. Combined with the amount of Braba I had this year, it was nuts. Um, LSU Red, I noticed that it was getting attacked by SWD a lot more than other varieties this year. It does have some nice characteristics, though, and maybe I'll regret one day getting rid of it, but uh, the flavor isn't so mind-blowing that I gotta have it, you know what I mean? Um, it seems to ferment very easily as well, uh, which is very strange. Uh, Mare to do, 
This is another fig that has really big cracking in it. Doesn't like the big temperature swings. Doesn't split, but because it has these large cracks in it, it ends up kind of splitting down the side potentially. It's also watery, has a watery flavor. Pons even says that in his book. And why did I ever grow this fig? I don't know. But um, it's kind of lacking for me. Mega Celeste, this is honestly the worst fig I've ever grown in this climate. In terms of like what you would want out of a fig in this climate, it has everything wrong. <laughs> So you can kind of see why some of these I've just chosen not to sell them. Like some of them, yeah, I'm getting rid of them. And they could go to a nice home, but some of them I just don't feel like have a place anywhere. And those are the figs I just decided not to sell, you know, like Mare to Do and, and Mega Celeste. Um, Nalaga is another Black, Madeira, uh, Black Mission type, sorry, sort of like Fico Nita very redundant it just gets beat out by galicia negra panache this is an incredible tasting fig guys man it's it's incredible i, I sort of was blown away um by a pennsylvania ripened panache i know it's really tasty caprified and grown in california Ugh, it's even good here guys it's really something um the only issue i have with it is that it's a splitter and it's got to go I'm even taking it out of the greenhouse for that reason because I had one planted in the greenhouse. Uh, Pendolino Rosso, this is a fig that hasn't ripened a single main crop for me and I don't know if it's common. It also doesn't really look that tasty. So even if it was common, I would say forget about it. Plint Nero, this is one that is been dropping for me for two years. I'm kind of tired of the Francesco nonsense that's been going around. And um, I'll let somebody else be the guinea pig on this one. I don't have the patience or the time to be growing figs that were never tested common um, for something that really doesn't look all that great. It, it kind of does remind me, though, of like like a gorgeous soap noir in a way. So maybe it is common. Um, who knows? But uh, I have very little hopes for it just in general. Um, the Rasties Persian Unknown, this is a fig that I really actually highly value. And um, I think it is deserves a place here, but only in the ground. I don't think it's worth growing in a pot. Um, I think it's the most reliable fig that I can grow here because it just has such an early crop. It's, it just will ripen in any poor condition. Um, it has a very short hang time. That three, those three things in combination make it the most reliable fig here. So I put one in the ground and I don't see why it wouldn't ripe, ripen a full crop here in the ground every single year and um, just be reliable. You know, that's kind of what I, put it in the ground for was something that was reliable um but i don't want reliable in a pot i want flavor in a pot red libya this is a fig that is just not very good it's like a fruity tang flavor that it has and across the board that fruity tang flavor profile that i describe in here somewhere Let's see, I don't even see it. What happened to it? Okay, we, we moved it into tropical. But, you know, some of these like Spey and GM175 and Red Libya, the flavor has that fruity acidity to it. I don't really like the acidity too much in my figs. That's the main reason why I don't like the cherry flavor category all that much. I think it's interesting for sure. Um, so I value Hative de Argentile for that reason, but you know, um, this fruity tang category, even the tropical category is a little iffy for me just in general. And I think it's kind of like one of those things. It's like, do I really need this? And, um, as a result, Red Livia, Spey, they just got to go GM 175. Um, you know, maybe the flavor in the future will improve. I mean, 
I would take GM175 over Red Libya and over Spayi. Red Libya splits a lot, doesn't like the changing fall temperatures. Spayi is the same thing. It's not supposed to be grown here. It's a fig that should be in like the Middle East or a desert climate, and that's it. Um, Sister Madeline's Green Greek. This is another Adriatic type, like Fico Gentile, that sort of splits, a bit redundant. I like Strawberry Verte. I like Blanche de Saison. I like White Madeira. This is one that didn't make the cut. Score of Abatsika hasn't held on to its fruit, and if it did, I don't think I'd really enjoy it anyway. It doesn't really look like a fig that I, I would like, you know. One of those I wish I knew what I knew now type scenarios. Suwadi, one of my favorite figs that I, I used to love, but I think it's finally matured. And now that it's in like its third or fourth year, it really was quite disappointing. And I've never seen that where a fig has actually matured for the worse. And it really had a, a big eye on a lot of them. I would say about half of them had like a big eye, very furry skin. Um, and it really was difficult for me to get it to the perfect ripeness. The slugs love it. Um, it also doesn't hang on the tree. It's very subject to detachment in that it falls off the tree prematurely, uh, as weird as that is. And I can't get it to that perfect ripeness that I had last year and the year prior. And, and in those years, I loved it so much. So for me, I think that was a, just a really bad year for it. It really rubbed me the wrong way. And for that, I have to get rid of it. Um, the Sunbird English Brown Turkey and Olympian are both English Brown Turkeys, and those are splitters. Those are figs that are too late as well, and they just don't deserve a spot here. Any English Brown Turkey at all is just a waste. Verdi Peso is another name for Fico Rubato. And um, we've talked about those reasons for that. Verdesca, this is a fig that I have had high hopes for because Paulo recommends it for people in shorter seasons. But um, I've seen photos of it grown at Paulo's place, and it's a splitter, so got to get rid of it. Um, Victoria from Montserrat Ponds. This is a very tasty fig. I don't know if it's going to translate well here to somewhere that's humid i have gotten to try it but it just seems to be always in a state of hormonal imbalance and i really am tempted to get rid of this variety i have one in the ground one in a pot we've kept them both we'll give them both one more year to see what the uh what the deal is violet dauphine um this just seems to be like another brojoto nero type that I don't really have the patience for um, or the desire to grow. I'm not really obsessed with these Brojoto Nero figs. Um, they're very similar to Black Madeira. And again, my money in that category is in Colonel Littman's. So that's just where I'm at. Yellow Nietzsche's. Uh, this is a fig I am going to give another year. We planted it in the ground. And we'll see what happens. Um, I think it needs to mature. It tastes a lot like a peach, more like any other fig I have. Um, it has a lot of potential, and I think it just needs more time because there are some friends in Michigan that love it, and um, for that, I have to keep it and and, um, and wait it out. This will be, I think, its third year, and I think it'll do better in the ground than it would in a pot. Um, it'll probably mature quicker, at least for me, unless I fed it just you know, an incredible amount of, uh, of fertilizer. So that's most of the coal list here, guys. Uh, there's actually more, believe it or not, that aren't on this list. But overall, I think uh, that really helped you guys and give you guys some perspective here. And sh maybe it helped you avoid some things that I've kind of fallen into, into the trap of getting some of these maybe. Um, not that all of these are not good figs and I wouldn't grow them in let's say a warmer place or a drier climate. Um, but you know, there it is. And at least somebody here in this climate can read this list and say, all right, well, that's just a complete waste. Um, 
or not a complete waste, but uh, not really worth worth trying. So anyway, guys, uh, I want to thank everybody here for watching this one. We do have some fig cuttings available for sale on FigBid. And there's very few sort of left. And what I've decided to do is give you guys a 30% discount code. Just message me the promotional code Ross. You send me a message here on FigBid before you pay, but you can purchase them, put them in like a cart. Uh, an invoice will be creative, created, and then um, I'll adjust the invoice to include the 30% discount after you message me. Once the invoice is adjusted, then you guys can just um, check out and pay through PayPal. And um, yeah, so I want to thank you guys for watching this one here. We'll talk to everybody soon. Check out our blog, figboss.com, and... We'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. All right, take care.